Canada has lost its bid for a non-permanent UNSC seat for a second time, and Justin Trudeau's failed and confusing foreign policy is to blame. In what comes is another reminder of Justin Trudeau's failed foreign policy, Canada has lost an opportunity to land a non-permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. Two seats were available in the category of member states from Western Europe and other countries, but Canada could not secure a UNSC seat and landed only 108 votes. A total of 128 votes were needed to secure a two-thirds majority. Norway secured 130 votes, while Ireland got 128. This is the second time Canada lost the seat. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had frequently billed the seat as an avenue for Canada to exert greater influence on the world stage at a time when international institutions like the UN are significantly compromised and international affairs are anything but harmonious. A former Canadian ambassador minced no words in blaming Justin Trudeau for his lackluster foreign policy which did not give much attention to garnering votes for the rotational seat. Stephen Lewis said, It shows that through the Trudeau years, Canada's superficiality and insouciance in foreign affairs got through to the rest of the world, and the world decided we were too flimsy, unfocused, ad hoc and chaotic to merit support. What Louis said it makes absolute sense as Justin Trudeau's Liberal government started campaigning for the seat in 2016, five years after Norway and Ireland. Both these countries had indicated that they would like a non-permanent seat in the UNSC roughly a decade before Canada had anything to say, giving them a long advantage. Canada's foreign policy establishment has become incredibly weak. It relied on the Middle East bloc for the votes, but most Muslim nations are apparently miffed with Canada for its pro-Israel policy. Meanwhile, Israel is miffed over Canada joining the bloc of authoritarian nations against Israel in a vote last year. This desperate shift reveals that Justin Trudeau's foreign policy lacked clarity and consistency. Despite spending $2 million on Canada's campaign, which is more than Ireland, Trudeau's messaging failed spectacularly, as he said ahead of the vote that Canada was moving forward and leading the way on issues such as climate change and feminist foreign policy. Hinting at serious confusion, The Guardian says that in the final days, the Prime Minister and his team mounted a frantic effort phoning leaders in India, Pakistan, Mexico, North Macedonia and Fiji to secure votes. Mere rhetoric of a liberal regime stands exposed when there is no concrete foreign policy in place. Canada's foreign policy on the malfeasance of China is also unclear to say the least. Ottawa must develop a clear non-partisan policy against China. Canada has started standing up to China in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic due to international pressure, but it needs to be seen that when the dust settles, whether Ottawa will tread down this path or will it go back to its old ways of appeasing China. The Trudeau brand has taken a nosedive since his India visit and the emergence of the blackface scandal. Since then, it has been one long and painful episode watching Trudeau befuddle his country's foreign policy. As for his relations with India, Trudeau very remarkably and single-handedly has been gutting the diplomatic channels. His defense minister, Harjit Singh Sajjan, is a well-known Khalistani sympathizer who did not get along well with Captain Amrinder Singh, the incumbent chief minister of the Indian state of Punjab and a staunch critic of the Khalistani ideology. The altercation led to the Canadian government taking a subtle jibe at Amrinder Singh for standing against terror sympathizers, which ultimately led to a royal snub when Trudeau last visited India. Justin Trudeau himself is close to Khalistani supporters. The Khalistan issue has been a hindrance in India-Canada relations since the 80s and a major bone of contention between the two parties. India wishes that the Canadian ruling class stops promoting elements which fuel separatism in India, but Justin Trudeau's politics does not allow him to do so.
Trudeau's toxic love for Khalistani elements was profound and evident even on his 2015 trip to India, where his delegation consisted of Jaspal Atwal, a convicted assassin and former terrorist who tried to assassinate the visiting Punjabi cabinet minister Malkit Singh Sidhu on Vancouver Island in 1987. Malkit Singh Sidhu called it a souvenir from Canada and refused to get the bullet removed. Five years later, he was assassinated in another terror attack in Punjab. Justin Trudeau must realize that beyond his domestic politics, there is a need for Canada to make friends with democracies and not with authoritarian nations. Liberal leaders like Justin Trudeau toot their own horns incessantly as they try to appease authoritarian nations as well as the far left with idealism. But when it comes to actual execution of policies, they fall flat. Losing the non-permanent UNSC seat should be a wake-up call for Justin Trudeau and for Canada.